Why would an open VPN? Why would we do this? So typically what we do have is that we are running the viral host and the client that we are using to control the viral host, like via Maestro or terminal applications or some browser application on the same machine. So in this case, we are not restricted in any way on how many interfaces we are using or what kind of IP addressing we are using. Effectively, what we do have is a direct connectivity between our host applications and the various networks that the viral VM offers. Now, um, if we do have a situation where this is uh, separated and put onto two different machines and some cloud in between that, that could be the internet or that could be some intranet, then those interfaces and those IP addresses or IP networks that the viral host has or owns are not directly or might not be directly accessible. So in this case, for example, we just have the public management interface here that is accessible and has a routable IP address. So how do we make sure that this guy here can access applications or ports or you know these devices over here directly on the flat network so it's not possible in this way so we would have to have something as a transport in between and this is being done by using uh, OpenVPN in layer 2 mode so what that allows us is that we do have a layer 2 connection from our workstation to the viral host uh, in a tunnel. So what that gives us is the capability of running a terminal application or some management application over here and that goes directly through the tunnel to the flat network. So what we do have in this case is this guy over here will have an IP address on the flat network that goes through the VPN tunnel and it is like this workstation is being connected over here to the flat network and that allows us to connect to the LXC or from the LXC then to the node or directly to a node if it has an IP address on the flat network. Okay, so how does this work in practice? What I do have here is a viral VM uh, that sits somewhere on the network. So this is not a local virtual machine. This is a VM that runs uh, far away. In fact, on, on the West Coast while I'm in Germany. And um, I have the UWM screen up here and what we can see here is that first of all I do have a little simulation running so this is for uh, connectivity purposes later on and then I uh, do have my system configured to use except for the management interface all dummy interfaces so as you can see so this is uh, the flat network so this is dummy and down here again dummy interfaces and then uh, dummy interfaces down here as well. Now what we do uh, to enable OpenVPN is we go over here to this tab here which is new um, and we can turn on the OpenVPN service by using this switch, right? Um, we want to use a TCP so this is probably the safest bet here. So if you know that you can reach the server using UDP, this is more performance. So UDP packages don't have the TCP overhead apparently. So this is a bit faster, if you will. But uh, the safest bet, even if you have a proxy in between or something, this will probably just work. So it uses the HTTPS port. So this is uh, what I'm going to use here. Now, uh, this is the, the, the range of IP addresses where my client gets IP addresses from. And um, then we can actually, you know, see the certificates uh, of the CA and everything down here. Um, okay, so this is all that's needed. And then we are going to apply changes and it will tell us what it's going to do. And again, we say apply changes and then this will take some time. Okay, so both of these jobs have finished um, and all of them were successful, so that's good. And it did install the OpenVPN software and it also created a CA and a certificate for the server and also a certificate for the client. So the client certificate and the client configuration is something to be shared between all the viral users of that particular machine. So there is no individual configuration per user account. So it's just a shared credential, shared OpenVPN file that we are using for multiple users. All right, so click OK here and um, everything is done here. And how do we download now the certificate and the client configuration? So this is something that is being done over here in the guest uh, user settings. And as you can see down here, there is a download button now that we can use to download the configuration file. Now we do have the configuration file down here and that is something that works with OpenVPN software. And in this case, since I'm on a Mac, I have downloaded the TunnelBlake OpenVPN software, which is 
working just fine on uh, all the uh, Mac OS X versions that I have been using so far. It has the, the tunnel and the tap drive or the kernel driver built in and it is digitally signed and everything so that's just fine. Now what we do next is we actually open up tunnel Blake. And when you open it up for the first time without a configuration, it will ask you if you do have a configuration file, which is true in my case. So I click on I have a configuration file and it will tell you that you just have to double click or open the configuration file with TunnelBlick. So that's what we're going to do. So we have our configuration file in the downloads folder. So let's see download here and then just open with TunnelBlick. And what it's going to ask us is whether this is a configuration just for me or for all users on a computer. So in this case, it's just for me. Uh, I have to put in my password now. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it installed it successfully. So we do have a configuration in here. We should have a configuration in here, which is the client configuration here. And as you can see, uh, we can click on log here and then say, oh, please connect. Now it will reach out to the uh, viral server and uh, the configuration progress will be shown up here and also in the log file here and um, Yeah, that's going to be authorized and authenticated using the client certificate and then uh, The configuration will be pushed from the server and we will get an IP address and We are connected. So that's all good. All right, so let's see if we do have connectivity um, Go back over here and see if config tab zero. So this is our VPN um, Adapter and we can see that we do have an IP address on the flat network, which is d.20 Now let's see and ping the viral host itself typically 1.254 uh, And it does ping and as you can see from the delay, this is quite far away uh, We can also ping our management host which is the 33 so this is also pingable. And then um, let's see if we can actually get to a console of one of these guys and go back to the overview and then my simulations. And uh, let's see what we do have here. Uh, let's go to the, the Brussels machine. As you can see here, I can telnet to the console using the viral public IP, but I can also telnet to the console using my management node. Um, but in this case, let's just go through the, oh no, we can actually do both or the latter one. So, okay, let's allow this. And what this does is it's taking us directly to the console. Let's see if we do have uh, Cisco and then show IP interface brief. And uh, so we do have an IP address on Flan Network as well. So we should be able to uh, ping this guy as well directly. So let's see, ping 172.16.153. And here we go. So we can ping this guy directly. We can tell it to this guy, 172.16.153. All right, password. So we are on the same box. Or what we also could do, we could use some management tool, like in this case, just something very simple as an MP walk dash V2C uh, C public and then 172.16.153 and then the system map. Um, and as you can see, I'm directly communicating with this node over the VPN and can use this management application or some other application and talk to these nodes directly using the OpenVPN. So I hope this is useful and uh, thanks for watching.